All right, today's YouTube video is gonna be a YouTuber confession tag. It's been a really long time since I've done a tag and I got tagged by Natalia Lee, so I will link her video and the original tag below if you wanna check it out after this video, but there are, let's check. 13 questions, so let's do this. Question number one is already going to reveal quite a bit to you. How many hours a week do you spend filming and editing? All right, we're gonna have to do a little bit of math here. So obviously there's coming up with the idea, which it's, I have never tracked how much time that takes because I often do a bunch of ideas at once, but let's just guesstimate 10 or 20 minutes. I don't know. And then actually filming it is something that I am still working on getting faster at, but I tend to screw up and just feel like I can say things better. So I will do repeats, just being real with you all the time. And I will just like redo a sentence until I feel like I actually said the whole thing without stumbling or something. So honestly, it can take about an hour Per video for me right now and it used to be way longer than that sometimes it still is if it's a really intense video and I want to switch it up and then editing believe it or not takes me even longer so what I like to do I use iMovie to edit my videos and I will do a pass through to kind of like cut out all the blank space the repeated sentences that I mentioned and gather up some of those overlays. Sometimes I will do that as I go, but more often than not, I wanna like get a sense of the video as a whole first. And then I will go back through a second pass through and I will start to add the overlays. I will start to add music. I will start to add sound effects. I will try to spruce it up and make it more interesting. And that pass will take a really long time because I am really, really detailed. I'm cutting the clips even shorter just to make sure everything is really spiffy. And then I will do a third pass pass through to watch the whole thing and make sure that I didn't accidentally leave in some duplicates or, you know, have any weird bloopers that shouldn't be there. And so that overall thing can take anywhere from five to 10 hours. <laughs> yeah, I know it's a little crazy. I actually didn't realize just how much time I put into editing my videos until I went to track it. But honestly, hours can go by and I do this in sections. I usually do like that first pass one day, the second pass another day, the third pass the third day, and I kind of space it out so that I'm not overwhelmed. But typically it's at least five hours if not more. I know, crazy, I know. But this is a confessions tag, so we're confessing right now. And honestly, I could probably take another one to two hours more, if not more than that, for the more complicated videos where I add in tons of overlay and I actually go and I film more B-roll after the fact, whether it's screenshots or actually stuff around my house. Again, this is a confessions tag, so we're confessing here. <laughs> then once I have all that footage to my liking, I'm feeling good about it, I've got everything added that I wanna add, I will save that to my computer, which takes usually like 15 to 30 minutes, depending on how big the video is, because I don't know, I think my, files might be really big. It takes a lot longer than it used to since I got my newer camera. And then I have to turn around and upload it to YouTube. Usually it's like an hour and a half for that step, if not longer. Sometimes it's two or even three hours if it's just a lengthy video. I don't know why. I don't know, again, if my files are too big or if I'm doing something wrong in the back end. I'm not that tech savvy, actually. So I just wait for it to upload. And while I'm waiting for it to upload, I actually do things like set up the SEO, the description, all the tags for the video. I do my thumbnail, which I spend a lot of time on. So usually that entire uploading time of that hour to an hour and a half, sometimes more, is where I'm doing all these behind the scenes little details. Mainly I would say it's on the thumbnail and I don't always take that entire time to work on it, but that gives you kind of an idea. Okay, so let's do the math here. So that is two to three more hours. So that's roughly between eight hours minimum per video up to 11 hours per video. So yeah, let's just say on average, more like eight to 10. And then I have been trying, I'm not perfect at this, but I've been trying to do two videos a week. So that is roughly 16 to 20 hours a week on YouTube videos. <laughs> 
That was the question, right? I got a little sidetracked. Yeah. How many hours do you spend filming and editing? If I am busy, you can see why I would cut out a video because that's saving me eight to 10 hours that I can do on other stuff. All right, that's enough of question one. Question number two is what kind of camera do you use to film? I used to just film on my computer until people complained about the quality and I finally went out and bought an actual camera. So I'll overlay that over this video so you can see what it is. It's not anything fancy by any means, but it's definitely more high quality than my older videos used to be. But I like how it flips up and you can see yourself while you're recording. I think my phone is actually even better quality, but I just tend to film on my camera out of habit. It was one of the cheapest ones that I could find, honestly, but I do think it brought my quality up by a lot on my YouTube channel when I decided to get this camera, just because I was using the camera in my, <laughs> my computer before this. And sometimes that makes me think like, did I even really need to buy a fancy camera? I really could have just used my iPhone to be honest. But the one perk that my iPhone does not have is that again, I can flip up the screen to be able to see myself and make sure I'm actually on camera and it's not getting blurry. And so that is a really good thing to have as a YouTuber. And I also think the audio quality is fairly good compared to some other cameras that I tried out because I don't actually own a microphone or anything like that. Um, Again, I'm just not tech savvy enough. I don't really know what I'm doing on the tech side of things. So if anybody's got like a training on how to be a YouTuber behind the scenes, let me know because I probably should watch that. Question number three is why do you vlog? I think originally I saw it as another type of social media and another place where I could talk about my books, but it has definitely morphed into something more where it's a place where I can connect with other writers, where I actually really, really enjoy a different type of creating and sharing my process and just talking through things and helping other people. And then on top of that, it's become part of my income, which is really, really cool. And so it's like, I don't just have to create books as an author, I can create videos and also have an absolute blast doing that. And yeah, I guess, I don't know if that answers the question, but that's why I like to vlog. Number four is who are your favorite YouTubers? And I really liked that Natalia said she wasn't gonna mention, you know, different author tubers because I would never wanna leave anybody out. So I'm not gonna do that. I'm just gonna mention the person outside of the writing community stuff that I have been like watching every single video that she puts out lately, who is Katherine Manning. And I've talked about her before. I've just really been enjoying her content. She's really helped me take my YouTube channel to the next level. Oh my gosh, I have so many, but most of them are writers or they talk about YouTube. I'm trying to like, try to branch out here. Oh, another one that I just found that I've been binge watching is Amanda Rach Lee, who has a bullet journal YouTube channel. Oh, I love bullet journaling stuff. Number five is do you monetize your video? And the answer is yes, yes I do. <laughs> Absolutely, heck to the yes, of course I do. So not only does everybody already expect that on YouTube, and just so you know, YouTube now puts ads on videos whether somebody decides to monetize or not, so it's like a guarantee that you're gonna see ads. But then also, I'm giving away free content and putting so many hours into it as we already discussed, and I believe in getting paid for my work. So there you have it. Number six is what's one thing you're excited about in the upcoming year? I actually have to think about this, shoot. As weird as it sounds, I'm excited about the idea of getting ahead because I feel like I have just been constantly on deadline, constantly running around, constantly trying to put out the next fire. And I would just really love to create that dream job that I talked to you guys about at the beginning of the year when I talked about my goals for 2021, which I think what it comes down to is finding a balance where I do work really well. I don't wanna stop working, but I also wanna be able to take days off so that I can also live and not always be working. And so I can actually enjoy, you know, a day off or reading a good book and not feeling guilty because there's so many other things that I have to do. So when you're an entrepreneur, I'm sure a lot of you understand this feeling where there's always something else you could do. And I think that's almost true for every writer. It's like, I could be writing right now and there's almost a guilt. So if I can get ahead, but also probably stop adding things to my plate is probably part of getting ahead, then I can step back and just enjoy you know, reading a good book and taking days off again, which I really, really could use. So I'm looking forward to finding that balance, I guess you could say. Number seven is, what's your most awkward filming moment? And the one that comes to mind 
I was on my way to BookCon and I was gonna stay with my good friend Mandy Lynn So I was coming into the airport and waiting for her to pick me up and I was like I will just vlog this experience in the airport, right? So I set up my computer at the time I was still on filming on my laptop I sat there with people passing in the background I had tried to find like a nice nook and cranny and probably nobody could hear me probably if they did they would have thought you know oh she's talking to someone else but I was so embarrassed. I literally couldn't form a sentence. I pressed record and then I sat there like looking over my shoulder and being like, this is so weird. I can't, I can't do this. I cannot, cannot film in public. I just, no, it was terrible. So I never shared that footage and I never actually said anything worth saying either. So I don't know how people film in public. I always feel incredibly embarrassed when I try. Number eight is what are your goals for your channel? And you guys, you know, I would like to reach 100K subscribers. That is a legitimate goal and I hope that we get there someday. But for this year specifically, my goal is, I think it's 30,000 subscribers. And we are currently at, when I'm filming this, 17,700. So it's an exciting goal. I'm very excited to see if we can get there. It's cute little penny again. Question number nine is, what are your favorite types of videos to make? I can say what are not my favorite types of videos to make anymore. I really don't enjoy doing how-to videos just because it tends to be a little more boring and it's hard to think of ways to spice it up and make it exciting. But once it is done and I've found ways to make it exciting, then I'm usually proud of those still. But I think the ones that are really creative and weird and different, like for example, my video on how not to write a book or how not to read reviews, I think it's called. Yeah, I'm gonna go with that because the, the videos that are more unique and they are in your standard format of like, sit down, share information, finish sharing information, ta-da. It's more of like, a, let's bring you through a story and tell, yeah, tell a story of some kind. Those videos are really fun to make. Number 10 is what makes talking in front of the camera comfortable for you? Oh gosh. One thing that helps me is to not worry about everybody that I'm talking to and instead more feel like I'm talking to one person and talk to you guys the way I would be talking to you if you were sitting here in the room with me. You know, the way that I would talk to a friend sitting in the room here with me. Um, so if you have writer friends, just imagine you're having that conversation with them and being like, well, this is this is what I have to share. I am far from perfect at it. If you could see the videos that I did when I first started out, I've definitely improved, but I still feel like it takes me a few tries to get out of my shell every single time that I film a video. Um, everybody's different, so you might just get more and more comfortable or you might be like me where every video is a little bit of a process and you just kind of accept it. I usually have to delete a lot of stuff. <laughs> Let's zoom in on Penny's cuteness right here. <laughs> you are the cutest. Number 11, do you or will you allow your kids to be in your videos? <laughs> Does that count? Not really. I don't know. I don't honestly know because I'm the type of person who I don't like secrets and I really, I really want to share everything with you guys, but I also know too much about the world and the creeps that are out there. And I have just, I've seen some things that I can't unsee about what people on the internet do looking at children. I don't know how else to say that. I really, really don't want to go into detail on that. I just want to be honest with you guys that it's going to be tough because I'm gonna be one of those people who really, really wants to share. You guys know me, like I share about Penny constantly. This is my current practice baby right here, um, fur baby. So I don't know. I, I feel like I'm going to ultimately wanna put them above myself and protect them even though I would wanna share, I probably won't for their sake, if that makes sense. But obviously I'll face that decision when I get there, I guess. Number 12, is your spouse supportive of your YouTube channel? Uh, Yeah, I think so. I think that it took him a while to not think it was a little bit strange because I used to be like, you have to leave. Like you need to be gone. I can't film while you're home. So that part he would be like, okay, sure. So that side of things, I think, 
I still do that and he's just adjusted to it. He's like, sure, I'll go somewhere. I think he probably thought that was a little bit weird. He maybe still does, but at this point when I'm like, hey, I'm gonna be filming a video. Are you gonna be out of the house anytime soon? <laughs> then he can be like, yeah, I'll go to the gym. Then I have the house to myself. So he's, he's adjusted to that. He's always been supportive, but now he's a lot more just like, whatever, this is, this is her process, I guess. <laughs> Number 13, this is probably my favorite question actually, is share one tip for someone just starting out on YouTube. <sighs> just one? Why do I have to be limited to just one? Okay, I wanna give you more than one. I probably will, let's just do that. Okay, off the top of my head, the first thing that I wanna say is don't be afraid to film a bunch and then not necessarily use it right away because that can help you to get comfortable in front of the camera if you start to film videos just for the sake of figuring out how you want to talk, how you want to edit, how you want to present yourself and you know the different places you could put your camera or different things you could focus on and think about and share with your audience and just like practice. Practice makes perfect. Well, you'll never be perfect, but practice helps you figure out what you want on YouTube. And then as you're getting comfortable, um, there is this saying about picking a niche, but it can help to start with a bucket of ideas and try things and see what you most enjoy and then try to pay attention and find the balance between what you most enjoy and what other people most enjoy and are searching for because if you can find content that overlaps in those two things where you love talking about it and your audience is looking for it that's going to be your sweet spot everybody's sweet spot on youtube is actually different so the things that i love filming you might not like filming you might prefer to talk about something else or do videos in a different style than me or you name it so i would encourage you to figure out what you like don't be afraid to just try things because in the beginning, nobody sees your stuff. You don't have to share it. If you put it up, you can just see what happens and you can be like, you know what? I don't like that video. Let's put up a different video. Or you can be brave and leave it all up there because somebody else might really like it and just keep putting up content and treat that beginning time, that beginning season, I guess, of being a brand new YouTuber as a free for all, practice session where you just have fun with it. Don't be afraid to fail. If you go into it thinking, I have to make perfect, amazing, incredible videos like YouTubers with a million followers, then you might never actually put up a video because that's a lot of pressure. My videos in the beginning were terrible, terrible. But you know, they got like a handful of views and then I got better and then I got more views and then I got better and I got even more views. So it is a learning curve and you gotta be okay with failing and okay with learning by making mistakes. That said, on the flip side of that, I wanna give you balanced advice and so I'm gonna kind of bookend it. So there's the don't be afraid to fail, just try and practice and put things out there and just put yourself out there and get started. Don't be afraid to start. And on the flip side, just to balance you out and confuse you a little bit, <laughs> not really, but maybe a little, is put your all in when you do try. Like, do your absolute best to the best of your ability, even knowing it won't be perfect, try to make it the best that you can because that is going to show through. People can tell when you make things the best that you can possibly do. So I've seen YouTubers who are like, they throw up a video and it's just full of awkward silences and you know that people don't want to watch a video where you got up and walked away for 10 minutes and then came back. Like they're not gonna stick around for that. So think about what you know people like and try to record and edit and talk about topics that people actually are gonna like in the way that you know that you would like. So I guess <laughs> I'm not explaining this super well, but I'm trying to describe balance between putting yourself out there, but to the best of your ability, if that makes sense. So I guess to use myself as a personal example, I started out where I was. I used the camera in my computer. I used you know, the audio in my computer. I just used iMovie, which was free in my computer, and I still do. And I just worked with what I had, with the information that I had learned so far, with the journey I had taken so far, and the abilities and skills 
of talking on camera that I had at the time. And I did the best that I could with that, but I continued to grow and learning it better. I watched hundreds of videos at this point on how to do better at YouTube, whether it's the video recording or the editing or the topics that you pick or how to talk on camera and things like that. I have done so much research and I continue to try to learn and pick up new things and bring you my absolute best with each video. And you can see that I've been growing over time. If you look back, it's just a natural progression. So I would encourage you to take what you have now, where you are at now, and share it to the best of your ability. I think it helps to have your audience in mind, but like I said, at the beginning it helps to have one audience member in mind when I was talking about being comfortable on camera instead of trying to think of everybody watching your videos just share a video the way you would if you were talking to a friend and just know that YouTube is not an overnight success it is not overnight at all I actually started my channel back in 2009 and then it was a music channel and I only had 300 subscribers by I think it was 2017 in November when I decided to switch it over to an author tube channel and then it took me another entire over a year a year and a half I think it was to become monetized and then after that we're talking about a trickle of income until slowly another year goes by and I start to actually make real income from YouTube. So I just did an exclusive video over on Patreon. If you're curious in the video club where I shared how much money I made from YouTube in last year, 2020, and then overall in the lifetime of my channel. If you're curious, I'll link it below. It's over in the video club on Patreon. But I, as I was sharing with them, I was showing how I started in the end of 2017 and I didn't start making money at all. I was not monetized on my channel at all until January of 2019. So it was over a year before I ever made any money whatsoever on YouTube. So you are not going to see overnight success. And I promise you that it is a slow build. So it's really important to not try to get into it for the money, but to make videos because you have a passion for it because you are excited about making these videos and you really want to share them. Yeah, I guess make videos for you, I guess is my last piece of advice. Uh, it's good and wise to also make them for other people because the point of sharing videos is talking about things other people might want to watch. So definitely don't forget that there are other people out there and definitely think of when you're doing video ideas, think of things that would make people click on the video, but ultimately make sure that you're doing YouTube for you and not for things like money, not for an external reason. You need an internal reason that gets you excited about YouTube. Otherwise I don't think it'll stick. So. All right, that was like four or five pieces of advice. I hope it was helpful. I could do a whole video on AuthorTube if you guys want that. It is on my list of ideas that I might potentially do in 2021. So let me know if you would be interested in that. I don't know how many people would be interested in that because not everybody's on AuthorTube. So thank you, Natalia, for tagging me in this YouTube confessions tag. And I will link the questions below if any of you would like to try this tag as well. Consider yourself tagged. And I hope you guys have an awesome day and I'll talk to you again very soon. Bye.